This video is going to look at the process of adding vectors together using the component method. And so first, before we get into actually doing some calculations, I want to understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. So in this picture, I have two vectors, A and B. And I want to add those two vectors together and find the resultant vector, which is shown in this picture as vector R. So in this picture, I'm adding vectors A and B together using the tail to tip method. I line the first vector up, vector A. I place the tail of vector B at the tip of vector A. And then my resultant vector points from the tail or the start of the first vector to the tip or the end of the last vector. We're saying that vector R is equivalent to vectors A and B put together. So I can take vector A, and I can break vector A into x and y components. So the x component of vector A points to the right. The y component of vector A points up. Here is showing the components with the vector. But then to make it easier to see, they're kind of shown off to the side. And I can do the same thing with vector B. I can find the x component of vector B, and I can find the y component of vector B. And this resultant vector, vector R, has x and y components as well. And what we can see from this picture is that this x component of the resultant vector is the x components of vectors a and b added together. And the y component of the resultant vector is the y component of a and the y component of b added together with the components, because they lie along the same axis, I can add them together. If the x component of vector a is 5 meters and the x component of vector b is 7 meters, I can add those two together and get 12 meters. We saw in the previous video with calculating components of vectors that those components can be negative, though. And if those components are negative, we do need to include that negative sign when we go to add the components together, because the one component will be taking away from the other component. So the process for adding vectors using the component method, the first step will be to draw a diagram. And this is if you are not given the drawings of the vectors, but you're just told the magnitude and directions of the vectors, you want to sketch those vectors out. You also need to pick your x and y axis. Typically, it's going to be horizontal and vertical, but later in physics, we'll get to things, for example, objects on an inclined plane, where we'll tilt our x and y axis, and so we need to be clear what our axes are. Once you have that sketched out and you have your x and y axis drawn, you're then going to go through and break the vectors into x and y components and calculate those components using sines and cosines. Again, a previous video went through calculating x and y components of vectors using sines and cosines. If those components are negative, you need to make sure you include the negative sign. So if the x component points to the left or the y component points down, you need to include that that component is negative for the later steps. You're then going to add the components in each direction to get the total x component and the total y component. So you're going to add all of your x components together, again, including the negative sign if the component is negative, you add all of your x components together to get your total x component. That total x component is the x component of the resultant vector. You then add all the y components together to get the y component of the resultant vector, or y total. And once you have those components of your resultant vector, you can then calculate the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector using the Pythagorean theorem and inverse trig. So to get the magnitude of the resultant vector, you'll use the Pythagorean theorem. The magnitude of the resultant vector is the hypotenuse, and so it's the x component squared plus the y component squared square root. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So x total squared plus y total squared equals the hypotenuse, or the magnitude of the resultant vector squared. And then to get the angle, typically we want the angles relative to the x-axis, and so we will typically use the inverse tangent, and we'll use the inverse tangent of y total over x total. And that would give us the angle that the vector makes with the x-axis. So let's look at a couple of examples going through and adding two vectors together using the component method. In this first example, 
I have vector A, which is 4 meters at an angle of 45 degrees above the x-axis, and vector B, which is 3 meters at an angle of 30 degrees above the x-axis. So the first step would be to draw the vectors, but that's already done. The next step would be to choose the x and y axis, but that's already shown in this picture as well. And so the third step is to go through and calculate the x and y components of each vector. So vector A has an x component that points to the right and a y component that points up. Vector B has an x component that points to the right and a y component that points up. And so we're going to calculate these components. The sine of 45 degrees equals AY over 4 meters. The cosine of 45 degrees equals AX over 4 meters. And so you can find that the X and Y components are both 2.828 meters. The sine and cosine of 45 degrees are both the same quantity. So 4 times the sine of 45 degrees gives 2.828 meters. The X component is positive because it's pointing to the right. The Y component is positive because it's pointing upwards. And I could do the same thing with vector B. The sine of 30 degrees equals BY over 3 meters. The cosine of 30 degrees equals the adjacent side BX over 3 meters. And so BX would be 3 meters times the cosine of 30 degrees. BY would be 3 meters times the sine of 30 degrees. This gives us the BX is 2.598 meters. BY is 1.5 meters. And the X component is to the right and the Y component is up, so both of those components are positive. So in this problem, all four of my components are all positive quantities. The next step is to find the X and Y components of the resultant vector. On the last slide, I referred to those as X total and Y total. So X total, which is the X component of this resultant vector C. We're saying that vector C is the result of adding A and B together. The X component of vector C, or X total, is the X component of vector A plus the X component of vector B. So that's positive 2.828 meters plus positive 2.598 meters. So we get that X total is positive 5.426 meters. I do the same thing for the Y components. Y total is the Y component of vector A plus the Y component of vector B. 2.828 meters plus 1.5 meters. So adding those together, I get that the Y component of vector C, or Y total, the Y component of the resultant vector, is 4.328 meters. So now I have the X and Y components of the resultant vector. But what I want to do next is find the magnitude and direction of that resultant vector. So just rewriting it, I had that X total was 5.426, Y total was 4.328 meters. So I sketched that out. The X component points to the right, the Y component points up. I draw those two components tail to tip. I'm saying that this X component plus this Y component are going to add together to give my overall vector. To calculate the magnitude of this resultant vector, I'm finding this hypotenuse. I use the Pythagorean theorem. The magnitude of that vector is the square root of 5.426 squared plus 4.328 squared, which gives me 6.941 meters as my magnitude of the vector. To calculate the direction, I'm looking for this angle theta relative to the x-axis. The y side, 4.328, is my opposite side. The x side, 5.426, is my adjacent side. So the tangent of that angle theta equals 4.328 over 5.426. But I don't want the tangent of the angle. I want the angle itself. So to undo this tangent function, I use the inverse tangent function. So the inverse tangent of the tangent of theta is just theta. But whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I do to the other side of the equal sign. So I need to take the inverse tangent of this fraction, 4.328 divided by 5.426. So theta equals the inverse tangent of this quantity, 4.328 divided by 5.426. 
And if my calculator is in degrees mode, and in here I'm going to be working with degrees, I get that this angle is 38.578 degrees. This vector makes an angle of 38.578 degrees above the x-axis. So with adding vectors together using the component method, there's a lot of steps. And you need to be careful as you're doing these steps. Double check that you have your components, that you don't switch your x and y components with vectors. Double check that you didn't forget negative signs. So if you kind of go through and double check step by step, you're less likely to make mistakes and have to redo the entire problem. Looking at one more example, I have two more vectors. Vector A is 8 meters at an angle of 35 degrees above the x-axis. Vector B is 5 meters at an angle of 25 degrees below the x-axis. So again, I'm going to calculate the x and y components of my vector. The x and y components of vector A, I have those sketched in. And so I'm going to use sine and cosine. I get that my x component is 6.553 meters. I get that my y component is 4.5886 meters. So I use the sine of 35 degrees to get this y component. I use the cosine of 35 degrees to get this x component. I'm going to do the same thing with vector b. I have an x component that points to the right and a y component that points down. The fact that it's down is going to be important. So I use the sine of 25 degrees to get the y component. I use the cosine of 25 degrees to get the x component. And when I plug those in the calculator and calculate them, I get that the x component of vector b is positive 4.532 meters. And the y component of vector b is negative 2.113 meters. It's negative because that y component is down. So we're going to see that that's going to make a difference when I go to add these components together. So I add my x components together to get x total. So x total is positive 6.553 plus positive 4.532, which is positive 11.085 meters. And then with the y components, I have positive 4.5886 plus negative 2.113 meters gives me a y total of positive 2.4756 meters. The fact that this one was down, so AY was up, BY was down, BY is taking away from AY. So we included that negative sign when we go to add the components. I don't refer to it as subtracting a number. I'm adding a negative component when I'm going through and doing this. So now I have the X and Y components of my resultant vector. So I sketch those out. The X component is 11.085 meters to the right. The Y component was also positive, so it's 2.4756 meters up. I draw those tail to tip. The magnitude of the vector, I use the Pythagorean theorem. So the square root of 11.085 squared plus 2.4756 squared gives me that the magnitude of the resultant vector is 11.358 meters. And then again, to find this angle relative to the x-axis, I'm going to use the inverse tangent. So the tangent of theta equals the opposite side over the adjacent side. So the tangent of theta is 2.4756 divided by 11.085. So the angle is the inverse tangent of 2.4756 over 11.085, which gives me 12.589 degrees. And so the direction of the vector is 12.589 degrees, and it's counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. We often will describe the directions in terms of the standard positions of the angle, where counterclockwise angles are positive, and clockwise angles are negative, and we measure, we often measure our angles relative to the positive x-axis. In a separate video, we'll look at one more example where the vectors were not drawn out, where we're given the magnitudes and directions in words, we're given the directions as the standard positions of the angles, and so we have to sketch out the vectors, and then find the components, and then add everything together. So we'll see it's a similar process, it's just a little bit longer because there's an extra step of sketching everything out and there's going to be more than two vectors.